Hey guys, welcome to Blonity. First, my little disclaimer, this is not financial advice, my own opinion and estimates, my estimates could be completely wrong. Don't trust, always verify, understand the numbers, be aware of scammers and you know the best how to invest your money. Please be aware that I'm invested in these companies. Okay, let's jump right into the Sunday minor comparison. First of all, Bitcoin is in consolidation mode here. Um, yeah, we were rising very smooth here and then the big drop here, 10K within one or two hours, that was big. And yeah, we're now at 45,000. So last week it looked a lot better, to be honest. Yeah, now is the question, um, yeah, what is going on now? I mean, um, this guy here on Twitter, he said, okay, we had in February a 10K drop and then we had another drop and I think then we started some consolidation, uh, some recovery here. In April also a 10k drop and another drop following after this. So yeah, and this was the drop here in September 10k and we're now going sideways a little bit down here. So it's possible that we, we get another leg down for example like here. Um, yeah, so please be prepared for every pr price action to the upside and to the downside. But the good news is that we hopefully will soon cross here. Uh, we'll have the golden cross. Uh, maybe you remember in June when yeah everything was was dark. I say um, yeah we had the the death cross here. Yeah now we're approaching to the the golden cross and uh, yeah this could be the start of the second phase of the bull run and yeah the for crazy gains in the at the end of the year. Let's move on. Yeah, Ethereum last week we were talking about new all-time highs here. They seem very close. Yeah, now this one uh, looks not so nice. Um, we were at 3,900, now at 3,3. Yeah, um, also Ethereum has to recover a lot here. The hash rate is yeah, it's not rising right now. We are at 121 exa hash. Yeah, we can see that within yeah the last three four weeks or so we are going more or less sideways here between 120 and 150 exa hash here and the next difficulty adjustment which is estimated in 10 days right now it would be um, negative here minus 2.9 to minus 1.3 we know the last three or four i think the last three were positive uh, last one was 4.5 percent yeah, it could be that the next one is, is more or less neutral, uh, which would be good for the mining companies. Um, the mining profitability is, is dropping right now. Here we have the three year chart. Um, in April, when Bitcoin was at 64,000, we had here the high. And uh, yeah, a few, two or three weeks ago, we had here another high, uh, an, a year high, a new one, when Bitcoin was at 45,000 or so. But then we had, since then we had two difficulty adjustments and yeah, with a price drop of Bitcoin, we are right now back in the low 30s, low 30 cents per day per Terra hash here, 31 right now. Um, so we need now push from Bitcoin to 60,000 or so to get back above 40 cents per day. Okay, let's uh, go to the minor comparison here. Um, yeah, most people know this chart here right now. We have here the 10 day moving average cross mining margin, the 30 day and the 90 day. It's always good when this goes up here because that means that in the short term they make more money than yeah, in, in the long term. And that means that the hash rate uh, of these companies rising or Bitcoin prices rising or all together. Um, yeah, so that was the last week here. Um, no big changes here. Hive is not far away from making 500,000 a day in gross mining margin. I think the revenue is right now at 600,000 or so. Yeah, had it, um, yeah, close to 300,000 US dollars here on the 10 day and 30 day. Um, yeah, I mean, had it now needs the the GPUs for, for ether mining. They are now installing them. Hopefully they can get them online soon because this would add another 100,000 US dollars or even more a day and that will get yeah hard eight into this levels here yeah bit farms is higher yeah 350 360 thousand or so uh, maybe it's 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 a little bit more but um, yeah i'm here now more conservative here on these numbers because you never know what what uh, yeah operational costs they have 
But Bit Farms has is better here than HUD, for example, because the the overall efficiency of the Bit Farms mining fleet is higher than the from these from HUD. HUD has 1.37 exahash and approximately 100 megawatt. Bit Farms has 1.42 exahash right now online with 75 megawatt or so. So that's the better efficiency, and that's why the gross mining margin um, is a, a lot higher for Bit Farms, but the revenue is more or less. Uh, the same right now from these two companies. Argo blockchain, um, yeah, close to 300,000 here. Um, they also need new miners. Uh, hopefully the first batch of the new ones as 19s will arrive in the end of September. Yeah, then we have Mara. Um, yeah, close to 600,000 here on the gross mining margin. Incredible. Um, Digihost, DMG is still low. These two guys, they really need num some miners now. I mean, DigiHost already has 200 peta hash and they're mining nice Bitcoin, but yeah, they want to be at the end of the year or beginning next year at 1.1 exahash and then with the bit digital miners at 3.6 exahash. But yeah, I want to see, I want to see the, the first miners coming in now, especially for DMG. There were so many announcements of miner purchases and this and that, but um, yeah, there, there are no miners running. They're only hosting others. Um, there's only a small, a small fleet of, of self-mining and no increase for the whole year. Um, for me, this is um, yeah slowly starting to be a no-go here. Um, I really want to see from these two, especially here, miners coming online. Um, yeah, I hope we will see this in September. If not, if in October we're still at the same levels, um, yeah, I think I yeah I will overthink this here. Um, then we have Riot, approximately the same level as Mara, a little bit lower. Uh, Mara is at 2.3 exahash now, Riot 2.2 of officially. Um, so they're very close together here on the operational excellence. Um, yeah, on the revenue side, we can also see it here. Um, yeah, Mara, Riot, very close together here, above 600,000 here. Um, yeah, then we have Hive here, 500, a little bit more. Bit farms hot and yeah, Argo, DigiHost, DMG. The operational excellence three, my first indicator for my BMX and BMX I. Um, this is my uh, KPI for the operational excellence of the miners. That means how much Bitcoin do they mine? How efficient are they? Um, yeah, what is the cost structure here for for one Bitcoin? Um, how much does it cost to mine one Bitcoin? So this is all the operational stuff here. Um, yeah, Mara still at number one. Most miners online, very low prices, uh, very efficient. Riot is very close here again. Um, it could be that uh, Riot is, is going to be surpassing Mara or so if we get some numbers about the operational costs, especially in the future. I mean, Mara, as I'm aware of, they're hosting at um, uh, Core Scientific in Texas. I mean, that could mean that, um, yeah, Mara will pay a little bit more per kilowatt than Riot because Riot has its own facility. But, um, yeah, we have to wait for financials and, yeah, first they need the facility there and so on. But right now, Mara here is still number one, Riot very close, number two. Then we have Hive, Bitfarms, Argo, Hut, DigiHost and DMG. Let's move on. The Hodel Excellence. So this is my second indicator important indicator for the BMX and BMX I. The hodl excellence means, yeah, how much do they hodl? Um, how much Bitcoins or Ethereum, Ether do they have on the balance sheet? And we know that Mara here is the lonesome leader with more than 6,600 6, uh, Bitcoins. HUD has yeah, 4,500 or so. Riot um, above 3,000 now. Um, Hive blockchain not far away when we when we calculate the ether and the bitcoin should be between 2.5 and 3000 right now bit farms um, more than 2000 argo 1700 or so digi host i think uh, approximately 400 dmg 290 or so so here also mara number one and then we have the strategic excellence um, which is look my indicator the third important indicator for the bmx which is looking into the future 180 days but the focus more in the short term on the 30 days i'm working here also with moving averages and it's the yeah the, the forecasted hash rate uh, what do they have in the future 
and what is the hodl that also means that i have to forecast the the bitcoin price um yeah which i did with the stock to flow model from plan b we know that we had a huge deviation uh, to the downside to the stock to flow we still have so i had to adjust this a little bit um yeah but i think um, it could be still valid um, at the end of the year or maybe next year and so um, yeah it could make sense this uh, to, to to do it with the stock to flow model um, yeah mara number one right number two hive number three oh um yeah um sorry i think uh, when i look here at the lines hot is number three and hive number four so they're very close together maybe i have to switch this here um yeah bit farms number five argo number six dmg number seven and dios number eight let's move on so um the bmx is yeah from the first three indicators opec three hodl x and strategic excellence three um, all together, this is the BMX, the Blonity's minus excellence, which shows in absolute terms which miner um, should have the most value or has in the BMX the most value. Um, so, of course, this is no financial advice, not financial advice. Oh, I have to adjust this here. <laughs> Still wrong. So, no changes here. Mara number one, right number two, HUD number three, Hive number four, Bitfarms number five, Argo number six, Digios number seven, and yeah, DMG number eight. Yeah, in my BMX, it's very important to have a lot of Bitcoins on the balance sheet. That's, for example, is, is Mara always very high here compared to Riot. And Hutt is in the lead of these four guys here because they have the most Bitcoins on the balance sheet. So, um, yeah, I compared this with the market cap here. And what's very interesting, in my opinion, and this um, yeah helps me to, to verify the BMX, the market cap looks more or less uh, the same. Not the numbers here, because the BMX, it has nothing to do with the market cap. It's just an absolute number uh, to compare miners. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, we can see here that um, on the BMX, Mara here number one, market cap also number one. So the market cap, it, it fits perfect here. From these four here, HUD is has the highest BMX and uh, the highest market cap. So it seems like the market has figured out um, a way to value these miners and it fits into my BMX. So I think the market is now a lot smarter than uh, the market was in um, yeah six or, or 12 months ago or so. This all makes a lot more sense in my opinion. Yeah, um, let's go to the BMXi. This is the BMX divided by market cap and the higher the number, the more it shows. Um, it should, uh, yeah. The more is it undervalued in terms of hash and hodl and so on. Of course, this is also no financial advice. Um, yeah, yeah. Now I, I made a change here um, because it it makes no sense. We have seen in the last few months that it makes no sense to to compare uh, Digihost, for example, with Mara right now. This is an, another level. Um, this is 10x in the hash rate difference here. Mara has 2 exa hash and Digios has uh, 0.2 exa hash and so on. So, um, yeah, they will stay for a while here undervalued, I think. I think until they, they get a, a lot new miners or there's this crazy hype at the end of the bull run. So, I think um, when we get this parabolic phase in the end, I think this could be really valid that these two here have the the most upside potential in the short term then but yeah we first need this uh, this crazy end of the bull run so i i um yeah made three categories the large caps the mid caps and the small caps the large large caps here this is mara and riot yes i know i should i put them together here but i have to change everything on my excel sheet and there would be a lot of work so i think i'll keep it yeah, from Mara and Riot, um, yeah, Mara is still a little bit in front, but um, I think um, for Riot, the, the big advantage is right now the big facility in Texas they're building. They're going to have something like 700 megawatt very soon. Um, it looks like they're really aggressive now in ex expansion. Then they will have hosting there. So in my model, I don't have hosting included, so I have to think then about this. And yeah, so I would say they're more or less now on the same level. Um, Mara appreciated more than Riot in the last few weeks. And yeah, my model was also indicating this. 
and I would say they are now more or less on the same level. Uh, Riot has, as uh, when I look at the chart, I mean they they have to to do something now. The chart, uh, the price has to go up. Um, then we have the mid caps here. Yeah, these are the four here, the big four. You know these guys. They are also more or less on the same level right now, so that's also very interesting. The market is is really, uh, yeah, now a lot smarter. Um, to value these companies. Um, Argo is a little bit in lead of, of bid farms right now in my model. Um, then Hive very close. So these three are yeah, more or less the same number here. And then we have HUD a little bit lower. Um, HUD was holding better in the last week than the others. Price um, kept higher and so on. Um, yeah, so that's why it's dropping here a little bit. But that doesn't mean that HUD will not outp outperform these, these guys in the next few days or weeks. Um, that's also very possible yeah and i saw some tweets and some uh, stuff uh, that yeah blondity sold his heart and so on yeah this is completely wrong um i said i'm starting to rebalance my portfolio to sh to sell some hut and shift it for example into argo or bit farms or hive into the more undervalued because before the the big price appreciation of hut it was already my biggest position there because i was very bullish on hut you know this and after this, after I had um, doubled or tripled now, um, yeah, the the position is is so big right now um, that I'm I have started to sell and to buy more of these others because my model is indicating they are now a little bit more undervalued, and yeah, but um, yeah, I still my hot position is is still the biggest in my portfolio, so that's very important to understand. I'm still very bullish on hot and so on, but I'm really following the model here. Yeah, and then we have small caps. We have DigiHost and DMG. Um, yeah, DigiHost here in front of DMG. But these guys, they really have to show show us some uh, some money now, some miners. That's very important. I will keep the pressure high. I was tweeting to them, said, okay, better bring some miners online. Um, yeah, I will keep the pressure high here. So how many eggs since December 2020 when I made the first uh, comparison here? So in the last week... Uh, yeah, this was last week. It was a little bit better. Yeah, then we dropped, especially at the end of the week. So the miners are all down. It looks like only DMG is up. I cannot believe it. Maybe I made a mistake here. But um, yeah, Argo is still the leader from uh, December 13th here, 13.9x. So it, uh, it increased the price f approximately 14 times uh, Yeah, since then. Okay, let's move on. Um, so as I always said, it's gonna be a rough ride. There will be 50% drops in one day. Can you handle this volatility? To succeed, you need a lot of know-how and nerves of steel. I never said it's gonna be easy. And right now it's also not easy. It, it's better than two months ago for sure, but uh, we're still far away uh, where we can go in my opinion. But um, yeah, it's, 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 it's still very difficult. Um, you need to be very, very patient and yeah, you need these nerves of steel because otherwise you will sell at the bottom. Yeah, and keep always in mind that uh, all models are wrong, but some are useful. So last week I said, okay, I will come up with a new price prediction. I was thinking about this a little bit. How can I do this? There are a lot of ways. Um, yeah, my, my new idea was here, um, yeah, to take the 30-day uh, gross mining margin um, from, from now and from the future. So I think, for example, that in December um, it could be a lot higher than right now, the 30-day gross mining margin. Multiply this with 365 for, um, for one year. Multiply this with 30 for the PE ratio of 30. Yeah, and then I divide it by two to come from gross um, to net earnings. So I think this is very conservative. First of all, I think a PE of 30 is... Uh, is uh, con conservative and uh, then I divide it all by two um, because yeah this is gross this is only operational stuff and then we have the GNA we have the depreciation and we will get some dilution and so on so yeah divided by two so conservative value here and then I add the HODL um, with no multiple so I think that's the big difference to my first model where I had the HODL also with a big multiple um, this is now the change here. So that means that the miners with a big hodl like Mara and Hutt, they have a little bit of disadvantage here right now. But um, I think the 
the truth will be somewhere in between the two models. Yeah, and then I divide it all uh, by the shares. Outstanding. Yeah, and when the people say, yeah, your PE ratios are too high and, and this and that, um, I always said we, we don't have um, a lot of data from bull runs from mining companies, uh, from, from Bitcoin miners. The only one, the last bull run was Hive blockchain and it started very late. And yeah, I think, um, yeah, it had two or four megawatts at that time in, in Iceland online. And yeah, so the PE multiple was a lot higher. I think it was triple digits or so because the Hive um, market cap was at that time at one billion um, yeah, US dollar. Okay, it was the first one. There was a lot of hype. And so it was a little bit different to be um, yeah, to be clear, but now, um, yeah, it is a completely, complete different story. That at that time it was a startup. Now it's a real company, and all these companies we're showing are real companies, are really big, and yeah, have huge growth plans. So, um, in a in the end of the bull run of Bitcoin, especially in the last two ones we had in 2013 and 2017, it ended with a huge hype, and I think this one could end also with a huge hype. Maybe it's not gonna be the end of this year. Maybe we're going to 2022. A lot of people are talking right now about this. I think it is possible. I think it's also possible that we get a triple a bubble bull run. So we had the first bubble in, in February or, or April. Then the next one could be in December, but maybe we're going only to, yeah, let's say 80, 90,000 or so. And then a lot of people think, yeah, okay, that's it. Uh, now we are going in a three year bear market and they they are selling then and yeah but maybe it's it's not the uh, it's not the end of the bull run maybe we go in summer 2022 or so in in uh, to 200,000 so i think no one knows exactly uh, what's going on i mean i still believe in the stock to flow and in the value of bitcoin and when the when the supply is cut in half that the value goes 10x i think that makes sense to me gold shows this and silver and so on and I think that's uh, that's a law of nature, more or less. The th I think uh, Bitcoin should at some point in this cycle, way above 100,000, um, hopefully at the end of this year, but um, there's no guarantee. I think we need a dam breaker or so. Some uh, huge tech company or, or more than one is buying Bitcoin. I think the biggest thing we could get for the price is an ETF. I don't think Bitcoin needs an ETF or needs any institution. They these institutions or companies they need bitcoin that's for sure bitcoin doesn't need them but for the short-term price action it would help us a lot i think so um, my stock price forecast for bitcoin at 50 south so where we are right now hives at three hot at 977 bit farms and so on so these are the prices from friday here and i think um yeah the stocks should be a lot higher with my formula hive should be at seven us dollars HUD at 12.4, Bitfarms also 12.5, Argo 4.2. Yeah, Mara is approximately level as it should be. Digihost should be higher, DMG not. And that's very interesting. Um, they they need all, they need the miners now. Yeah, and then we have um, we have Riot uh, blockchain, which should be a little bit higher than we are now. Of course, this is not financial advice. Um, if you don't like the model or something like this, please make your own calculation and your own model. This is my model and I think that's uh, possible, but uh, it could be completely different. Bitcoin at 100,000, also not financial advice here. So we are here right now. And I think, um, yeah, Hive could more than triple, had eight more than double. Bit farms more than triple from now because yeah, they seem very low or it's, it's more than quadruple. Also Argo, <laughs> also quadruple here. Mara could double, um, Digihost double or triple here, DMG. Um, yeah, they could uh, triple too, and Riot could double here. So yeah, but I think uh, 100,000, um, yeah, I think uh, it would not give us uh, the, the prices we, we want to see for, for these companies. So we need, we need Bitcoin to go higher um, in the in the next few months. So when Bitcoin goes to 150,000, I can see Hive at 23. So that looks a lot better. Hot at 47, Bitfarms 57 right now. 
um, Argo 18.8, Mara 170, Diggy at 18. Of course, they need the miners, also DMG, the miners they announced, and Riot at 150. So what's interesting in this model is that Bitfarm surpasses here HUD-8, for example. Um, again, um, the, the HODL plays a, a less uh, important role here in this model. And yeah, it, it, it depends on how fast do these companies get the hash rate online. And yeah, that's, uh, that's the, big, uh, the big thing here. <coughs> so yeah, I mean, that would look very nice here. Of course, not financial advice. Then uh, Bitcoin at 200,000, and this is the, the end for me here. I mean, if it goes higher, no problem. But um, I think 200,000 would bring the miners very high in price. The good thing with these companies is that the, the fixed cost and uh, the, the, the operational costs and the other costs like GNA, like uh, depreciation and so on, they are more or less fixed. I mean, electricity doesn't change big. GNA, yeah, with NASDAQ uplisting, it goes a little bit up, but um, not that big. Depreciation, yes, you have your more miners, you have more depreciation, but it doesn't change uh, whether Bitcoin goes to 100,000 or 200,000. But uh, the gross mining marges, margin changes incredibly, and also the net earnings will change incredibly um, to the positive. So that's what when I think uh, these stocks really will go parabolic if Bitcoin goes to 150 or 200,000 because the costs will play a very small role then because it will be only 10% of the earnings or so and the other 90% is it's going to be earnings or, or net profit or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, and I think that's that's the big thing then because they're mining Bitcoin, for example, at 10,000 or so per Bitcoin on operational costs and then you add the other cost like five or 10,000 per Bitcoin and that's when you have like 15 or 20,000 per Bitcoin and the price at 200,000. Of course, this is only gonna happen a sh very short period of time, um, but um, that's also the time when these stocks are very hyped and these they make these crazy gains. I'm not here to make some fair value price um, forecasts I think you have to go to to these analysts like H.C. Wainwright or so. Um, I think um, for me it, it's more important to 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 show the potential here when everything comes together. So yeah, these are the prices here. Um, I'm predicting right now. Of course, this is not financial advice, and yeah, it could it could uh, yeah happen completely different. First, we need a Bitcoin in the real bull run. And yeah, but I think then is everything is possible and we can see triple digits here for, for some miners, definitely. Okay, some people ask me about my portfolio, maybe next time. I think uh, first I will share it uh, on Patreon there because also a lot of people are asking me there. But I'm not sure right now whether I will share it or not. I mean, you know the stocks I'm holding from my YouTube videos. But um, I think the share how many shares do you hold of each company and what is the percentage i think that's a very individual decision and yeah as i said i don't want to that people are copying exactly because sometimes you have a feeling uh, your intuition says okay this stock is undervalued i had this with hot also my numbers were telling me and that's why i was overrating it a lot of people did and then criticized me why i'm so big in hot um, yeah these other companies like argo are a lot better but in the end, I was right uh, with my decision. But uh, next time, I could be wrong. And yeah, you with the with the with the weighting of the stocks, I think you should follow here your own intuition. So I'm not sure right now whether I will share this or not. So and I want to say thank you for all your support in the last few months. Uh, you really a great community here on Patreon. It's now approximately 970 members. On Discord, it's it's more uh, more than 600 people there. Um, in incredibly cool community there, um, discussing the miners. I mean, I get a lot of infos uh, from there because um, they are all becoming mining experts right now. And uh, yeah, 600 people at Discord and 917 on Patreon. That's that's incredible. Twitter now 5,344 followers. Thank you very much. Twitter is a little bit more fun for me. 
tweeting this and that and yeah making some uh, statements there and so on it's, it's not that deep that the patreon um, or these miners comparison on youtube but um, twitter is very good to get fast information to get uh, market sentiment and so on so twitter really has some big advantages it's also a great platform in my opinion yeah, and then youtube uh, with 6125 subscribers it's also incredible so let's see whether we can go to the 10,000 here on youtube or twitter this year that would be amazing but that's not the most important thing okay guys so again thank you very much for the support have fun hopefully bitcoin goes up again very soon and yeah think like a whale like this guy here Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Auf Wiedersehen.